Okay, chemists, I'm going to post another video on how to tell what the charge on a variable charge metal is. Now, in the future, I asked everybody in class, are there any questions? And nobody had any questions. And now I've gotten about 10 emails where you guys are still struggling with figuring out the charge on a variable charged metal in a compound. I could have easily gone over that in class with you. So let's try to be a little bit more vocal. And when we have class uh, questions, let's ask them in class. I know it can be hard in this virtual setting. And um, this is proof that if you have a question, somebody else probably has the same question. So let's talk about um, the charge on variable charge metals. Now remember, let's write down the variable charge metals we're going to be concerned with are three musketeers because they're plus two and plus three. That's why they're called three musketeers. Our lowest L, meaning lowest as in it has a plus one charge, then copper also has a plus two. Gold has a plus one and it also has a plus three. Mercury, the plus one on mercury actually comes in pairs. And then our tin and lead. Those are in family four with four valence electrons, so they will form a plus two charge like all the transition metals and then also a plus four. So the only time you have to worry about what the charge is on a variable charge metal is these guys, and these will be your X. So let's go over, for example, like this. I recognize copper is a variable charge metal, so I have to worry about what the anion is. The cation is what's going to be X, the variable charge metal. So I have one copper that I don't know the charge of, but I'm adding it to a chloride, which has a charge of minus one, and they always add up to zero in compounds. If there's no charge indicated here, then it is a compound and the char, uh, sum of the oxidation states adds up to zero. If there was a charge there, it would be a polyatomic ion and it would be a different story. So in this case, X equals plus one when you solve for X. So this is copper one chloride. The Roman numeral indicates the charge on the metal. So let's do some with the polyatomic ions. So I'm going to look at this and I'm going to say it's not binary. It is ternary. It does have a variable charge metal. So I'm going to say I don't know what the charge on iron is. It can be two or three. That's my variable, which is X. I can look cyanide up on my variable charge metals and I will see its charge is minus one. When you look on your list of variable charge metals, cyanide is going to be listed as CN minus one in the minus one section. So I don't know what iron is, but I do know that I have two cyanides that each have a charge of minus one. So therefore, X is going to equal plus two. So this compound is iron 2 cyanide. Now let's compare that to the other possibility, which would be iron 3 cyanide. Like such, cyanide still a minus 1. I have one iron and three cyanides 
In this case, x is equal to plus 3. So this is iron 3 cyanide. Here's my two possibilities for an iron compound with a cyanide polyatomic ion. How about this guy here? Well, we don't know what tin is, so that's going to be my X. So my variable charge metal is always assigned my X. I don't know what his charge is, but I do know that I am attached to two CO3s. If you look on your list of polyatomic ions, you'll find carbonate, and carbonate's charge is minus 2. So in this case, X has a charge of plus 4, and this one is tin 4 carbonate. Let's compare that to what tin 2 carbonate would look like. If chin, tin has a charge of plus 2, it would only need one carbonate, which is minus 2, because tin is the variable charge metal. Carbonate is always minus 2. It adds up to 0. So x in this case is plus 2. This is tin. 2 carbonate. Let's do a few more. I start at the top. does not start with H+. Plus. It starts with cobalt. It is not binary. It is ternary. So in this case, my cation or my plus is cobalt. My anion or my negative is phosphate. <clears throat> I can look up on my list of polyatomic ions, PO4, and I will see that its charge is minus 3. Cobalt could be a plus 2 or a plus 3, so we're going to call it X. So we have three cobalts that we don't know what the charge is, but we have two phosphates that are a minus 3. This is a compound, so they're adding up to 0. So 3X minus 6 is equal to 0. So X in this case is plus 2. This is cobalt to phosphate. Let's compare that to the other possibility, which would be cobalt 3. If cobalt was a plus 3, and phosphate was a minus 3, they would come together like this, and this would be cobalt 3 phosphate. Okay, let's head on to gold. So let's walk through this. It doesn't start with H+. Plus. It is an ionic ternary compound. Therefore, I'm looking for a polyatomic ion. Remember, if the polyatomic ion is not NH4 in the front, 
This starts with gold. It doesn't start with NH4. So it's not NH4 in the front. Therefore, it is a negative polyatomic anion. And in this case, it has parentheses. So I know that's my polyatomic ion is inside the parentheses. So I look on my list of polyatomic ions and I find that this is called sulfite and its charge is minus two. I don't know what gold is in this particular case, so I'm gonna call it X. So I have two golds that I don't know what the charge is, but when I add them to the anions, which is three sulfites with a charge of minus two, it's gonna add up to zero. So this is gold three sulfite. Let's look at what the other possibility for gold with sulfite. So in this case, I have, again, two golds that I don't know the charge of, but it's in a compound with sulfite, which is minus two, and it equals zero. So two X minus two equals zero. Two X equals plus two. So in this case, gold has a charge of plus one. This is gold one sulfite. So here's how you calculate. Remember, only the variable charged metals we've talked to do, talked about do we have to worry about this with. The charges in the polyatomic ions will be found by looking on your polyatomic ion sheet. I also taught you the ins and outs chart where you can kind of get an idea where the charges are if you need help finding these. So the polyatomic ion is identified and found on the variable chart, I mean the polyatomic ion charge, list of polyatomic ions that you have as a reference. There's all sorts of other reference materials that you can look at or look up by Googling and finding lots of other videos if you are still confused.